Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. XRP can't be dirt cheap. Have you ever heard anyone say that before? I have. Now, it's subjectively not true if you just take that at its face value without any additional context. For instance, I subjectively would state that XRP today, hovering a little over 50 cents, uh, is, is pretty dirt cheap. That, that's subjectively, but that's because I have an expectation that it's going to be worth a veritable fortune in the future compared to where it is now. But have you ever heard David Schwartz say anything to this effect, that XRP can't be dirt cheap? Well, I'm sure for many of you, the answer is yes. And this is a quote from many, many years ago. And it's one of these things that, like, I understood what he was getting at the first time I read it years ago. But it has been bandied about throughout the XRP community so many times with people trying to get the community hyped, I guess. Or, or maybe they're, maybe I should give them... Uh, the benefit of the doubt, maybe they just legitimately don't understand what they're looking at in the explanation, even given the context. Uh, but people are thinking that this is some sort of quote that XRP is, is going to be worth a fortune in the future. It can't be dirt cheap. It has to be worth way more. That is not the point that was being made. And I want to explain what I'm talking about by that. Um, and then I want to jump into this article from the Crypto Basic because there's some interesting facts in here and points that I want to make uh, from the Crypto Basic. The title is how $100 weekly investment in XRP can turn into $1.4 million in February 2024. Folks, it's a story about consistency and persistence. It's about having exposure to the crypto market over a long period of time uh, rather than expecting life-changing wealth five minutes after you jump in. But before we go in further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. So regarding the first point that I want to discuss, um, what got me going on this was um, a post that I saw from my fellow XRP YouTuber, Crypto Eddie. Uh, she shared comments from Ripple CTO, who uh, David Schwartz, of course, is also... Uh, co-creator of XRP and the XRP Ledger. These comments uh, happened on an X Spaces event, so live live chat event with real human voices and whatnot, for those of you not on X who are on the way of what it is. Uh, but it's really just an actual live chat, very cool feature. But um, he said a number of things. And then uh, Crypto Eddie actually shared a big clip of this on her channel, so you can go, go check that out if you want to. It's like an 18 minute or so video, uh, video, and a, I don't know, 15 or 16 minutes of that was just straight up basically David Schwartz talking in this event. But I want to talk about a couple things that have to do with this. Um, in this post on X, Crypto Eddie shared a couple quotes from David Schwartz. Reads as follows You're going to see us placing other bets. We haven't gotten the traction we wanted just from payments. Okay, David Schwartz said that. And this is something that I picked up on. It was pretty easy to pick up on. And I've been saying this in recent months uh, on my videos from time to time. I, and, and you know what made me catch this? I mean, so, okay, a couple things. First of all, obviously, Ripple's been diversifying. If you just look at their actions, um, look at what they've been doing when they purchased Medico in 2023. And there are other things as well, but it's very clear that they're diversifying. They have an interesting push, uh, not specifically just in positioning XRP as a bridge currency, though that's still a thing, of course. Uh, you know, pushing central bank digital currencies, development from various nations around the world. There's, there's all sorts of stuff that they're doing, and they're expanding outwards, right, to things unrelated specifically to payments. And so you may have observed things like that over the last year, but what really brought it home for me was seeing Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse on national television. I think I might have first seen it on CNBC. He was being interviewed, and he was asked, okay, so tell us about Ripple. What's Ripple? What's this company Ripple doing? And instead of saying something along the lines of, uh, we're a fintech company in payments, and then going on to speak about uh, XRP or anything like that, which would have normally been the case, like, go back half a decade, uh, that's the type of uh, explanation you would have heard from Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse. That's not what he said. What he's saying now, and I'll just have to kind of paraphrase, but this is the, the general message he's sharing now, is, oh, yes, well, we're, uh, we're offering enterprise solutions uh, to, to crypto companies. It's something to that effect. And I, so the first time I heard him say that, I was like, well, that's very different. What is going on here, right? <laughs> and so there, and then I just, I immediately thought about what they've been doing in, you know, over the last year in particular and how they branched out. And I was like, yeah, payments is not the focus anymore. They're doing a bunch of different stuff. Now, that can cause alarm in some people's minds and in some people's minds it has because they're like, well, what about XRP? That's been at the core of the business model, right? Like, is that thing shifting? 
Well, things are shifting, but um, I saw no indication that um, XRP, well, like, like they were caring less about XRP or its adoption as a bridge currency, which is their primary use case with XRP, right? Which is important. It's the most well-known use case in the community. I think it's fair to state. Um, and I say I said that even before seeing David Schwartz comments because um, I know that um, there, there was a time I didn't look up before recording this video, but I remember the the latest number years ago would have been that if you look at all of Ripple Net payments, maybe twenty or twenty five percent were using XRP. And when it got to that point, I was like, "Whoa, that's pretty freaking baller!" That that jumped up fairly quickly, considering that we just got out of the pilot uh, for XRP as a bridge currency in October of two thousand eighteen. So it jumped up pretty quickly. And then the most recent number I've seen since then is that about fifty percent of Ripple's payments are utilizing XRP as a bridge currency. So I'm like, "Aha, okay, going in the right direction. That's very cool stuff there." So we're not going the wrong direction. XRP is further adopted. So it's not that they're losing in a focus on XRP from what I could see as an outsider, because I don't have any insider information whatsoever. I'm just a dude on the internet uh, running a YouTube channel with a silly ass name, Moon Lambo. Um, but that's what it looked like to me. So I'm just drawing conclusions as best I can based on publicly available information. But David Schwartz did share some insight here specifically. And he noted, uh, no, it, we're definitely not going to reduce our push forward into the world of payments. It's just that we're doing other stuff. And again, that's me paraphrasing there. And you can go check out the video if, if you'd like to. And it is interesting. I listened to it. But um, I think that that'll probably calm some people down if you're worried. No, of course. And, and again, with, with Ripple being the largest holder of XRP, wouldn't you expect that they'll do everything within their power to make sure that XRP markets are healthy and that sentiment doesn't shift to the negative, especially as it, as it pertains to how they're using and treating XRP? Well, of course, logic would dictate, dictate that would be the case, right? So there was that, but then one of the things that he was asked during this, this uh, Spaces event was about the dirt cheap, comment, dirt cheap comment for XRP, which I referenced at the outset of the video. And this is it. There's this post here on X. It's on your screen now, November 20th, 2017. This is 10 days after I jumped into crypto. That's how long ago this was. 10 days after I jumped into crypto. And David Schwartz wrote the following. And mind you, this is before XRP hit its, what is now its current all-time high, a little shy of $4. It was probably around 20 cents or so, probably somewhere around there on November 20th, 2017. And so David Schwartz wrote the following. It can't be dirt cheap. That doesn't make any sense. If XRP costs $1, they'd need a million XRP, which would cost $1 million. If XRP cost a million dollars, they need one XRP, which would, again, cost $1 million. And so the, the, the point that he was making there is not that XRP on its own can't be cheap. It was cheap then. It was cheaper then. And it's still, I would say subjectively, it's just my opinion, I'd say it's still pretty cheap right now compared to where I believe it will be in the future anyway. And I could be wrong, but uh, I think it's cheap compared to what it's likely to be in the future. And so uh, anytime I'd see people sharing this and they'd be like, yeah, but XRP, David Schwartz says it can't be cheap. I'm like, oh my God, did, did you, the full context is on your screen. There's a, there's a post above and below it, which kind of breaks out a little bit further. But suffice it to say, what he's saying is, if the price of XRP is higher, then yes, you can conduct more transactions because it, when it comes to positioning, XRP is a bridge currency, Liquidity is more important than the actual price because if the price of XRP is $1,000 but nobody's buying or selling it, then it doesn't matter what the price is. You, you can't use it as a bridge currency. So if you're Ripple positioning it as a bridge currency, you'd rather have XRP at five cents uh, if that means you get liquidity as opposed to $1,000 if there's no liquidity because then you can't use it. Liquidity is actually more important for this particular use case. And so what happens, and David Schwartz actually noted this, and I've talked about this before, is as the price goes up, it means bigger market cap, and that generally goes hand in hand with larger volume and more liquidity. If there's more liquidity, then what happens if you're going to make a $1 million payment is, you know, a decade ago, if you made a $1, $1 million purchase of XRP or payment with it, like, that would move the market materially because there's almost no money in it. It would be because, my God, the level of volatility, it'd just be insane. But now, if you make a $1 million purchase of, of XRP or sell a million XRP, the market's not going to budge because it's way bigger, way, way, way bigger. You know, it's very normal to have about what? Close to a billion dollars in 24-hour global transaction volume for XRP. So yeah, $1 million, it's a drop in an ocean. That's the point he was making. He's saying it can't be dirt cheap for this use case if you want to make the bigger purchases. <laughs> And I've corrected it so many times over the years. And so anyway, I wanted to highlight this because 
And this is the first time I saw David Schwartz directly address this. Now, it doesn't mean he hasn't addressed it. I easily could have missed something where he has addressed it in the past. I just, in the, in the six, you know, over six years since he posted this, I personally haven't seen him address it again. He could have. And so the fact that it is like, oh my God, yes. Let's bring this home. Like, I, yes, I knew I was right. Uh, just through the context, of course, and I've said this many times on my channel, but now there's actual verification for sure from David Schwartz. He didn't mean that it can't be cheap. It is cheap. He's just saying for this particular use case, that's what he's talking about. It can't be cheap if you're going to do so-and-so. And so if the price is bigger and there is greater liquidity, you can make greater transactions with it. That's it. That, that, that's what he's getting at. That's it in a nutshell. And then there's this, how $100 weekly investment in XRP can turn into $1.4 million in February 2024. Now, this is interesting. I have a couple points I want to make about this. So let's go through this. Here is how you would have become a millionaire this month if you had invested $100 weekly in XRP from September 1st, 2023 to date. Like most cryptocurrencies, Ripple-affiliated coin XRP has shredded most of its value due to the massive volatility that has rocked the entire market in recent times. According to data from CryptoRank, XRP is down 17.4% year-to-date. Similarly, XRP was down 0.7% in 24 hours to 50.8 cents. The coin is also down 4.1% and 12.5% in the weekly and monthly charts, respectively. Despite registering huge losses in the daily, weekly, and monthly charts, the sixth largest cryptocurrency is up 23.6% since February 2023. So folks, a couple points I want to make here. First of all, this is the reason that you shouldn't look at a specific shorter time frame and draw conclusions about the long-term viability and health of XRP or any cryptocurrency because it don't make no damn sense up in this batch. It just simply doesn't. Case in point, there was a post, and I actually highlighted this in a video, I think yesterday actually, uh, there's an XRP community member who noted that out of, it might have been like the top 10 cryptos, pulling from memory here, something to that effect. It showed that like Bitcoin was up to whatever degree, uh, you know, over a three month time period. Uh, ETH is, uh, just pick a coin. If there, it's one of the large cap coins in the top 10, they're all up, except for XRP, which at the time I think was down maybe like 17, 18% over the previous three months. And so looking at that, Somebody who has less experience in crypto might think, oh my God, this is going the wrong direction. I should just get out of this thing. This is, this is a sinking ship. I should just sell. Oh, are, are, are you sure? Because XRP is still in the top 10 cryptos by market cap and it keeps getting more and more adopted. Is it perhaps the case that you're selecting a very small time period, which might sound big to you because it's months, but might you be actually selecting a small period of time in which XRP happened to have been going down and there's no short... Uh, no shortage of examples over the last 10 plus years where you could pick any random three months and XRP is actually up. Might that be the case? To drive the point home, one of the cryptocurrencies that people have been saying is way, way, way up because it's well known within the XRP community will be Flare. Now, I purchased Flare somewhere, sometime around, um, the last time I purchased it anyway, sometime around the middle of October. Sentiment was in the gutter. I think it was like, I don't know, eight-tenths of a penny price-wise, something like that. So it's it's more than tripled in price since then anyway. Massive move to the upside. And here you can see it's actually up in the last, even if you just looked purely the last 90 days, it's still up 153%. Then you got XRP, my God, it's down 23%. Wait, XRP in the same 90 days, down 23%, flare up 153%. Well, shit, my timbers, is something wrong? No, <laughs> that's my opinion, absolutely not. To drive the point home, look at a different time frame and it paints a different picture. Flare over the last 12 months, the last year, is down still. It's down 31.85%. Look at XRP over the same time period, the last one year, 12 months. It's up 24.81%. Well, God, based on that, I guess I should panic sell my flare, right? No. <laughs> you said yes, you're not listening. You're not getting it. <laughs> What I'm saying is you don't look at the short-term time frame. You, geez, you can have any narrative you want. And we know that XRP tends to move sideways and down more so than a lot of other cryptocurrencies, which makes it that much more torturous to hold. It makes it harder for people to hold. And history shows us that when it goes, it really goes. So I'm just going to wait for that. 
Either it's going to happen or it's not, but the short-term price action in and of itself, in a vacuum, is not an indicator that it's going to go to a new all-time high or go to zero. It literally just means nothing because it's just random volatility having nothing to do with fundamentals or almost nothing to do with fundamentals. So, I mean, it is placed in number six because that's a factor. Fundamentals, the real ecosystem surrounding it, yes, that matters. But broadly speaking, the correlation, the movements, it's just with the rest of the market. So it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. Doesn't mean anything in a vacuum. That's all that I'm saying. Let's go a little bit further in this article because there's another point to be made here, which is very important. It bears mentioning that XRP is not a new cryptocurrency. It officially started trading in 2013, over a decade ago. While most XRP investors might be underwater, investors who use the dollar cost average investment strategy for XRP since its debut could have been in major profits by now. For instance, an investor who committed $100 weekly into XRP from September 1st, 2013 to date would have invested $54,400 using the dollar cost average strategy. However, that investment would have been valued at an astounding $1.43 million with an XRP currently changing hands at 50.7 cents. This represents a remarkable surge of 2,533%. So folks, I understand that in the real world, there's no human that would just keep putting from inception in September to date, $100 weekly in and not cash out. I understand that it's so, like people, a normal human at some point recognize, wow, this is a metric F word ton of money. I'm going to get me some of them profits. I, I get that. But the, the point stands. The point is that Dollar cost averaging in, not worrying if the price is up, not worrying if it's down, but just having broad exposure over, over a long period of time will allow you to capture the directionally what is happening. And so when you get those big shifts to the upside, which historically we've already seen for XRP, that's what makes this possible. Putting in about 54 grand in today, it would be worth 1.43 million, despite the fact that uh, XRP you know, has done what it's done in recent years, despite the SEC attack, all that stuff, it would still be worth $1.43 million. Well, that's quite a return. And I'm just saying there's a lesson in there. It's about persistence. Like, If you believe that the market's going up, my gosh, people just get shaken out too easily. It's about having, again, broad exposure over a long period of time and recognizing we don't get to choose when the big jumps are. Either we're right and they're, they're going to happen or they're not. But the fact that they're not happening when you emotionally want them to occur doesn't mean that they won't happen in the future. It just means you're feeling emotions because you're a human. That's it. So all that to say, <clears throat> by the time we're at the end of this market cycle, if we're really going to see things dramatically move to the upside, Bitcoin hits a new all-time high, why would XRP not melt faces? And so what I'm saying is, I still believe XRP, relatively speaking, is cheap right now. I'm optimistic it's going to be worth way more in the future, even though I don't know that. I admit I could be wrong and it goes to zero. I'm just a dude I, on the internet. like, But I believe what I believe. I've placed my bet accordingly. And I'm just going to sit here and wait. I, I stopped accumulating um, in October of 2020. I recognized publicly, I, I stated publicly, I, I have a serious problem. I cannot stop buying XRP. I made some big-ass purchases, and I said, I'm done. And I, I, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself. I did make myself stop because I, I purchased an ungodly amount, to me, subjectively, what to me, subjectively, is an ungodly amount of XRP. And I've only purchased other stuff since then, and it's still about a third of, in terms of United States dollars, it's about a third of my crypto portfolio still. <laughs> so... That should paint a picture of just how much I've been going a little bit overboard with my XRP, but I have the conviction that I have. It sucks the SEC got in the way, but, you know, now it does have legal clarity, so we'll see what happens here. But uh, it's just, again, two major lessons in here. Short-term price action doesn't mean anything. You can, you can mentally twist yourself into, uh, up into, like, a pretzel you know, and have emotional distress looking over specific time frames when other coins are doing better. But it doesn't matter. There have been other times in the past where XRP has done better or pick, a, better, or pick enough, uh, long enough timeline and XRP looks great compared to some other coins. It's, it's nonsense. It's just about either you have exposure when the thing goes or you don't. And dollar cost averaging makes sense, which is what I did for most of the time building my XRP position. That's what I was doing for years. And I was down or, or roughly at break even for most of the first three years I was in XRP which shouldn't be surprising. If you start building a position, you should expect that you didn't buy the literal bottom. And at some point, you know, it's going to be at least a little bit lower, if not a lot lower than when you first started purchasing it. So I just got broad exposure for those years. And then now here, here we are years later, and it's worth a lot more, even despite the SEC attack. That's the lesson. 
having broad exposure. Now, of course, if we're wrong about long-term vi vi uh, viability of a coin, eventually, uh, in a mature enough asset class, the coin dollar cost average or not, it goes to zero. But do you think that happens with XRP? And that's what you got to decide for yourself. I think XRP is long-term viability. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.